tiger, a powerful member of the cat family, characterized as being fast, agile, and hard to see. The Northrop F5E Tiger II. Responsive, agile, hard to see, fast, and maneuverable. Aerial combat, a fight between two or more opposing aircraft, a dogfight, fought at close quarters and consisting of hard turning, hard maneuvering engagements. Aerial combat, or dogfighting, had its origin in World War I. It evolved from the application of the machine gun interrupter gear, a device that allowed pilots to fire their guns through the propellers of their aircraft. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, military aircraft performance, speed, and design all began to improve. In World War II, with its total commitment to air power, the military fighter came into its own as a truly versatile, high-speed, formidable weapon. A weapon that was used to control the skies in strategically important areas. In 1944, the jet age was born with the Messerschmitt 262. With the jet came speed and performance never before reached as a new era in tactical fighter capability emerged. Korea, a war that was more than a place of conflict. For the jet fighter, it became a proving ground, a place for testing high-speed jet aircraft as tactical fighter planes. A place for comparing the design, firepower, and maneuverability of our fighter aircraft against those of a major antagonist. And a place to prove that aircraft designed and dedicated to dogfighting are the only kind of fighters capable of matching the performance of similarly designed aircraft. But after Korea, Western concepts of aerial warfare in a nuclear environment began to change. Military strategists saw future wars being fought with ICBMs and long-range bombers. In the fighter field, American designers turned from small, highly maneuverable, dedicated dogfighters equipped with guns and close-in missiles to larger, faster, higher-flying fighter interceptors armed only with long-range missiles. Enemy aircraft would be identified by long-range radar and the push-button pilot would launch a missile at an enemy he never saw. This concept of push-button warfare led to the design and production of the so-called standoff tactical fighter. And when the Navy's prime dogfighter, the F-8 Crusader, was replaced by an aircraft with no guns, the dogfighter became a vanishing species. But then came the war in Southeast Asia. And almost overnight, U.S. tactical fighter strategy became obsolete. Large, missile-only aircraft, with their crews trained in standoff techniques, proved inadequate. An inadequacy reflected in unacceptable kill ratios. Suddenly, pilots were required to visually confirm all bogies, identified by radar, before they could be engaged. This meant closing to within a mile before firing. The enemy pilots in their small, highly maneuverable aircraft designed for dogfighting 
were consistently outturning and outfighting our pilots. Our standoff weapons, designed for accuracy at longer ranges, were having to be fired in close, too close. They were missing their targets. A decade of standoff technology and training required immediate reappraisal. At the Air Force Fighter Weapons School, a program of dissimilar air combat tactics was begun. For the first time in the Tactical Air Command, F-106s flew training missions against different types of aircraft, F-4s and F-100s. In the Navy, a fighter weapons school was established and nicknamed Top Gun. The school began teaching naval fighter crews advanced air combat maneuvering tactics. In the Navy's dissimilar aircraft program, the subsonic A-4, small and maneuverable, simulated the MiG-17 for the fleet's F-4 and F-8 pilots. This training paid off. The Navy's first aces in the Southeast Asia War were Top Gun graduates. As more and more air crews graduated and returned to the fleet, the Navy's kill ratio against enemy fighters rose significantly. Today, the Air Force and the Navy continue to have strong, dissimilar training programs. The instructors are the service's best fighter pilots. Most are battle experienced in aerial combat. The adversary aircraft for this realistic training are high-performance frontline tactical fighters. They are small, fast, and agile. And their appearance, performance, and radar signatures are like those of the MiG-21. The dogfights simulate aerial combat up to the point of actual firing of live weapons. The aircraft that has the performance to fill the demands of dissimilar training is the Northrop F-5E Tiger II. Outstanding dogfight performance was the goal of the F-5E design team. Using the latest computer-aided technology, the Tiger II's performance and structural integrity was theoretically proven before the final design was released. Subsequent fatigue tests verified the F-5's structural strength and enabled the aircraft's service life to double. With its performance superiority integrated with its operational capabilities, the F-5E became a fighter pilot's aircraft. The F-5E is an extremely agile, high-performance, lightweight fighter, and it's dependable. Time and again, we've flown these aircraft to their limits. During combat, I like a fighter that can turn, and in the Tiger II, I've got it. With the leading edge extensions and the maneuvering flaps, I can make tighter turns at higher speeds. Tighter turns, especially the ability to turn inside his opponent, enable the Tiger II pilot to fight where his aircraft performs best, the primary combat region of the air combat arena. Even in those cases when the opponent has Mach 2 capability, the hard maneuvering required to gain the position of advantage or to maintain visual contact causes rapid deceleration and altitude loss into the primary region where close engagement occurs. Since a fighter pilot's goal is to achieve a quick, safe kill, the Tiger II pilot can use his aircraft's performance, size, and smokeless engines to gain the initial advantage. Combat records show that the aircraft with this advantage, when flown by an experienced, well-trained pilot, normally retains that advantage throughout the fight. I can usually see my opponent before he sees me and that gives me the initial advantage. Then I'll have about five seconds to determine what I'm up against. Aircraft, armament, and energy state, his and mine, and who has the positional advantage. If I do, and I feel I'm more maneuverable, then I'll force him into a turning fight. But if he has the advantage, then I'll keep my energy up and use the vertical. Whether the fight proceeds vertically or horizontally, a feature that contributes greatly to the dogfighting ability of the F-5E is the accuracy of its fire control system. 
This system accomplishes several tasks. Target detection and range tracking, gun aiming, and launch computation for missiles. A dogfight switch provides immediate missiles or gun choice with automatic target lock-on. If the minimum launch range is exceeded before the missile can be fired, a touch of the dogfight button automatically places the system in the air-to-air -air guns mode. In this mode, the firing distance is recomputed for the two 20 millimeter cannon. Firing solutions, whether against a training dart or an enemy aircraft, remain the same. Standard snap shooting and tracking modes enable Tiger II pilots to fly equally well against every type of maneuvering or non-maneuvering target. As the most widely deployed tactical fighter in the free world today, the F-5 serves its users well in the defense of national security. When compared to contemporary aircraft, the lightweight Tiger II is a dogfighter without equal in the air combat arena where the battle for air supremacy is fought. Our mission is to emulate a threat aircraft in all facets. Philosophy, tactics, maneuverability, difficulty to see, turning performance, and as close as we can get to what we think the most representative threat is that our forces are going to have to fight. It's extensive training concentrated in the air-to-air -air arena. That's what it's all about, and it's very effective. The ultimate and final truth in dogfight capability is actual combat. Short of that, dissimilar air combat training is a proving ground where fighter pilots fly their aircraft to the outer limits of design and performance goals. A proving ground for both men and machines. In this challenging environment, the F-5E is right at home. I got it. Okay, there's the F-5. Okay, forget it. We got him. He's way clocked down. I've got him. I've got him. He's coming. No time. Of course, I feel high. You've got to check your and you'll know it. So. Overhead. Overhead. I, Long, I got one behind. Get ready to slice that. Are you marking him? Okay, I'm slicing. Going with you, Ron. Another half minute left. Sandwich between you now. Jake, buggy on the left side. Might be I got floor. him, I got him, I got him. Three and a half minutes. Parker, you're still curious for that, Jack? Okay, Ron, there's one or two to the left, seven o'clock. He's coving over. Jack, 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 I'm off to the right. Uh, Ron, slice okay. left to the three feet. I'm off right. He's still on his left turn. Marty, are you engaged? I got to die by four o'clock. Can you watch him? Okay, come hard left. That's five going up left. Come take left. Fox two, Fox three, right five, right five. Right, right, right. Roll right. Hang on, Jerry. Roll right, roll right and slice. Uh, Tiger, you got an F-14 at your 5 o'clock. Bring it around, Hartz. Keep it that tall, put that in. Hey, tall. Hey, tall. Uh, good good shot. Okay, I got him, Walt. Okay, one of going down. I got a guy in the trail there. Come on, I've got two back in your six. Go ahead, come Coming with you in the turn. Okay, we got two F-4s that are dead. Yeah, you got one that's going to die. Track in, track in, track in the F-4 on the left hand turn. Oh, what a beautiful shot. Thunder's going to try to get a gunshot at SF-14. There's the guns on the F-14. Snapshot, snapshot. Uh, we're looking for 2 o'clock. We got a number of those 12 o'clock high. Look at the target. Look at the target. Look at the target. Let's put him to the left. I'm going to roll out. Fox 2, Fox 2, that's 5. That's 5, that's 5. Okay, come on. Let's go ahead and zero 9 zero. Check the F-5 with your right one. Way below. Way below. Let's go ahead and zero 9 zero. Check the F-5 with your right one. Way below. Come right, come right, come right. Bring it back, starboard dog. Hey, call. F-4 in a row. With its agility, turning performance, and maneuverability, the Tiger II is more than a match for the majority of frontline fighters found throughout the world. The F-5E Tiger II, truly a cat for dogfighting. That's a kill.